This is a pulse. It's less than a fortnight to the. Uh, it's less. It's less than fourteen days. I mean, two weeks to elections. And this is the pulse. Let's now hit on the campaign show. Jennifer Kwamwa is here mm -hmm. with me, and she'll tell us more about the campaign show. Where has the president been all this while? Well, as you mentioned, with only fourteen days until the, with less than thirteen days actually till the <laughs> big day till Ghana goes to the polls. All the presidential candidates have been very busy. Let's start with the president. He is still in the Upper East region. He's visited uh, Bursa South, Bursa North, also the Sandama constituencies. Um, he's already told people, um, his supporters and party faithfuls at rallies that they will complete 70 community day high schools. And today he spoke to some civil society organizations on the SADA poverty alleviation program. Mm -hmm. So we can watch some of those videos right now. Right. <laughs> President John Mahama on Monday started the second day of his tour of the Upper East Region by inspecting ongoing work to upgrade the Bogatanga Hospital. The president was satisfied with the rate of progress of work. He said the hospital, when complete, will be properly equipped to make it a first-class institution. <laughs> President visited the Garu and Pusiga constituencies next. At Pusiga, President John Mahama once again sold to the people his idea of putting up farmer centers in parts of the country, including the three regions of the north. So if you are a member of that center, if you are in the course of the farming season, you need a little money to support you, you go to your center and say, I want 200 cities, I have a funeral, I need it for the funeral. They'll give it to you. And at the end of the farming season, when you have harvested your crops and you have sold your crops, then you can go back and settle the debt you have at your farming service center. I cut the sword for the first one. Construction is about to start. We are starting with 50 of them. We are starting with 50 of them. And I know that one of them will be here in the Pusiga area. The president also encouraged the people of Pusiga to see women as essential to the development of the country and vote for the current MP and parliamentary candidate for the NDC, Hajia Ladi Ayamba, to return to parliament. Next stop for President John Mahama was the Boku Central constituency, where the NDC has Mahama Ayariga as the incumbent MP. The president promised to continue to be a leader for all Ghanaians, irrespective of their political party, religious or ethnic colors. With humility, with modesty, I'll be a president for all Ghanaians. I don't discriminate among Ghanaians. I don't see Ghanaians in their party colors. I don't see Ghanaians in ethnic colors. I don't see Ghanaians in religious colors. Every Ghanaian is equal. Every Ghanaian I see as the same. And so I'll continue to lead this country and make sure that every President John Mahama ended his tour on Monday with stops at the Binduri and Boku West constituencies, and he's expected to visit the Bulisa South and North, as well as Chiana Paga constituencies. <laughs> Okay, so let's cross over to the Upper East region where Albert Sorry is standing by. Hello, Albert. 
what can you tell us about the president's uh, campaign to where and where has he been going and what has he been has he been telling the people this morning the president appeared on the, the regional gbc radio station where um he granted a live one hour interview uh, basically talking about his government and what it is doing for the people of the Upper East region. From there, uh, he proceeded to address uh, the National Forum on uh, Transforming the Northern Savannah. Uh, this is a forum organized by a coalition of civil society organizations in the Sada zone. And basically what they want to do is to bring all the flag bearers of the uh, party who are contesting in this year's election to try and uh, let the people of northern Ghana understand what the commitment of their government is giving the opportunity will be uh, to making sure that SADA works. You know that there is a new uh, board and a new chairman for SADA now, and over the last one or two years, they've been working very hard to try and get the authority back on track after uh, the previous scandal that we saw. So the president appeared before um, this forum uh, today, and he talked about the fact that SADA was initially, uh, I mean, it was the government's idea. Unfortunately, um, what happened had happened, and so um, they have to look at it all over again. And so he's been talking about um, what they will do differently this time round. He talked about the fact that there are factories that were started by Kukuma, which are no longer functioning, and some of them are still here in the Upper East region. The meat factory, for example. He talked specifically about establishing another shear uh, processing factory uh, in the Upper East and Upper West regions. There's already one in the Northern region. And so he says that two more will be set up in the Upper East and Upper West region so that um, the women who are engaged in shear butter processing uh, can have a factory where they can do that and be able to um, sell their produce. So these are some of the uh, issues that uh, the president has been addressing. He's been asked a lot of questions uh, also about uh, feeding grants and what the government is going to do um, with regard to agriculture and all of that. And he's answered um, the, the issue of agrig by the fact that there's there are farmers centers that they are setting up across the country, and some of them are going to be in the Upper East region. Yesterday night, he cut sword for the start of one of those farmers centers in a community called Ghani. It is near Tono, where we have one of the biggest irrigation dams in the Upper East region, uh, in the Nabrongo Central constituency. So he's cut the sword for that start, and he's been selling the idea to, these people, uh, to, to the people of the Upper East region at that forum uh, earlier today that one of the ideas of having those farmer centers is to do that so that our farmers can have a training um, on how to use modern agricultural practices in order to improve on their yield and be able to um, sell and you know make more money for themselves. Did he talk the about moment, the irrigation <clears throat> dams for agri? Yes, you know, um, the, the first day when the president arrived, uh, he held a rally in the capital, Bolkatanga. And uh, one of the highlights of the speech he, he delivered that evening was that he, he sort of um, uh, uh, downplayed the MPP's policy of one village, one town. And his opinion was that the MPP does not even clearly say exactly how these towns are going to look. But the NDC government, under his leadership, uh, has been able to, um, through SADA, he sells a lot of the dams that are already existing in the Upper East region. He's also cut salt for the beginning of construction of uh, the Kamni irrigation dam in the Garut Pani constituency. He says that is going to happen. There are plans to start another dam in Polibu where um, usually a lot of floods happen when they open the Barre Dam from Burkina Faso. And uh, he's, uh, he's been saying that that dam at Polibu is going to um, you know, be used as an irrigation dam and also uh, 
be used to produce hydropower as well. Certainly, so the irrigation. president has been saying a lot uh, in his show. Yes. When is he supposed to end his campaign uh, in that? He's region? actually wrapping up the tour now. Um, at the moment, he's in the Bulga East constituency. That is where we have the current Deputy Attorney General, Dr. Dominic Ayene, as the MP. And he's also running again this time under the ticket of the NDC. And from there, the president will proceed to the Talency constituency where he will wrap up his campaign. Well, many uh, thanks to you, Albert. Sorry for the update. We'll be uh, coming back to you in our subsequent bulletin for more. Uh, Jennifer, he's not the only person on the campaign show. I know Nanado Dankwekufad of the MPP is also campaigning in the north. Yes. Where exactly is he now? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's doing regional rallies throughout all the regions right now. And right now he's at the northern region. And he's also been sharing his message and especially explaining how the one district, one factory <laughs> will transform the north. Exactly. Exactly, into mm. economic hubs. So we can just listen to his uh, voice right now, his video right now as well. We are going to improve the agriculture of the northern region. So that the agro-industrial business will be the predominant business in the northern region and create thousands of jobs for the young people of the northern region. It is no longer going to be necessary for young men of the north to go down the south to look for non-existent jobs. We are going to create jobs right here for the people and for the young people so that they can stay right here in the north and make their life here. That is how we're going to implement the one district, one factory policy. You've heard Sir Martin talk. It is going to encourage our agriculture and bring lots of jobs into our area. We're going to restore the health of the National Health Insurance Scheme so that it will work for everybody. It is a great legacy that Kufo left us. Mahama, is collapsing the National Health Insurance Scheme right across this country. We're going to secure the future of our country by making sure that all young men in Ghana, without exception, have an opportunity to go to school to learn something, whether technical trade or academic. Free senior high school policy is going to be implemented in the Kufuado town. So that was the NPP flag bearer, Nana Kufuado, in the north, and speaking and explaining to the people uh, the good things the NPP will bring uh, if they're giving the mandate. Uh, the independent candidate, the only independent candidate, Jacob indeed, Osei Eboa, indeed. Is, Joy 2017. is also campaigning mm. massively. Where is he right now? Well, what has he been you saying? know, he had a full schedule this week. Earlier this week, he was at Sogakope in the Volta region. And um, before he went to Sogakope, he was here in Accra meeting clergy, business people, the TUC as well. Mm. But very recently, he was at Inquanta North. Um, sharing his manifesto and speaking to, you know, his electorates there as well. So we can take a look at that. Right. Um, we went to Mwanta because it's one of the constituencies that in 2012 they voted for us. And they've been crying for peace because uh, they were earlier on marked as one of the flashpoints. And so by their voting pattern in 2012, they've realized that the, the flash point has been taken away from them. And so they invited me to be there in order to re-echo the peace message that the Joy 2012 stands for and as to how to be able to develop our country. But honestly, when I went there, one of the key issues that they want me to put across is about the Eastern Corridor Road. We were not happy about it. Our experience over there was not anything good to write home about. Um, on all the stretch right from um, um, from Hohoi, you know, you know, they have actually tied the road from Mkwanta up to the Peso. That is, that is the only area that has been tied 
and then you could see that that is the true representation of what all of us are envisaging the Eastern Corridor Road to be. But the rest is not anything good to, uh, to write home about. And I'm pretty sure that maybe the government uh, will, will do something about it. And I don't know what could be done at this point in time. And so we also took the opportunity. They've also heard that I've launched the Ghanaian dream. Uh, so we took the opportunity to share that dream with the Quanta Senior High. That dream is about we creating industry out of every single natural resource that the nation has been endowed with. And over there, we again re-echo what we stand as the Joint 2012 team about all-inclusive governance, that we need every single individual. And that was Jacob Osei Boa. Uh, we know the CPP presidential candidate, Kobina uh, Ivo Kobina Green Street, Street. <laughs> is in Wale Wale. Yes. And uh, what, what, what's going on for the CPP? Honestly, for him, he's had a very, uh, he's spent quite a considerable amount of time in the northern region. Um, he's been to, uh, you know, Garo, he's been to Tamale as well, and now also as Wale Wale. And his message also is of transforming Ghana, rather returning Ghana to its previous glory and also dispelling that myth that a vote for the CPP is a wasted vote. Right. <laughs> Let's see whether it will sell this time around. Okay, so uh, we are unable to bring that uh, sound of the uh, candidates, but we have our correspondent, Martina Bugri, who's been following the CPP. Good evening to you, Martina. Uh, what exactly has Ivor Green Street been telling these people he's been meeting? Um, you know that the Wale Wale constituency happens to be the constituency where the MPP vice presidential candidate hails from. And so he said he took time to go around that area, the Mampuzu area, to look at what um, the MPP did for the people of Mampuzu and any time the vice presidential candidate of the MPP mounts the podium, he talks of figures and facts as if um, the MPP had passed. He said the figures and facts do not reflect on the ground, neither do they reflect in the lives of the people. It says there's no development. The MPP spent eight years and did not develop the area, just like the NDP also spent eight years and did not develop the area. It says a vote for the NPP or the NDP is a vote for, for the NPP says it's a vote for vengeance, and the NDP says they are already out of the elections, and all um, is left is for the people to vote for a change. And it says that they shouldn't fall for the arise and vote for a change of the NPP, but they should know that the CPP has a better agenda for the people of Ghana. They say the CPP is the only party that has the people of Northness at heart, and they saw it when uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah ruled the country. And so these are some of the things he's been telling the people. He just finished his tour of the region, and he's heading towards the Upper East region. Martina, so how have the people been receiving this message? At, at Jana, when he mentioned that uh, Dr. Baumia is an Accra Nordner who doesn't understand the issues on the ground. The people started making noise. And so we would say that from the love and uh, cheers that he received, it means the people agreed with what he said. Right. Many thanks to Martina Bugri for that update from Wale Wale. And now let's get to uh, where the central region yes. where a chief wants the Kaswa interchange to be named after him. I think it was quite a surprise for the vice president <laughs> when, you know, he met the paramount chief of Odupong of Fanko and he was given that proposal. A very intriguing <laughs> one, if I must say. But I think we can take a look at that right now. <laughs> He's occupied this throne for nearly 50 years and has been thinking about what to do to leave a good name for his ancestors. Fortunately, His Excellency President Joe Mahama has built on overpass in Kaswa. There is only one request Nana wants to make. If it's possible, you should name the interchange after him.
Now ka onye no odupon a ochite the second overpass. I'm mani na na nimi din atenasi. Very interesting proposal, and and I believe the vice president will communicate yes, it to he the, said president. the president. The vice president said he's he, they will consider uh, that, that proposal. proposal. <laughs> mm. I wish this chief luck. <laughs> yes, I mean, would, would we all like to have but, an interchange but, but it, it's named after like us? It's not like a seizing of uh, I support this or that. Yes, we just had Kofi Akwalu who says that he's endorsing mm -hmm. MPP, and now Odike for Mahama. Yes, what's he saying? He, and why is he, he joining? He has the NDC? he has thrown his weight behind the presidential candidate of the NDC and he's saying because of the level of developments that he has seen in the country, he's toured the country, he's seen the level of development and because he sees the, uh, the NDC as a more united party and because, you know, he represents a united party, why did it, it makes sense to, 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 to why support did, a united did, party. Why did he decide to step down in the first place? Oh, anyway, I mean, <laughs> so let's hear the case of what's saying uh, President Mahama a party leader to go and be a minister under certain government no way that is not my desire it's unfortunate that the electoral commission has not been fair to me because when you take mpp and ndc i'm the next political party that have po political offices all over the country visible that's unfortunate for the sake of the nation i, I have the right to take her to court but, you know, the whole nation will be holding ransom. It's on record. I'm not fascinated in any political appointment as a minister or no way. I've not been induced. I'm being realistic. I have told the whole nation. And looking at the infrastructures, and you will bear with me, the unionism that President Mahama is able to unite NDC, it looks more attractive to be mingled with. Because we UFP, our name is United Front. And we cannot partner with the party with divided front. At the moment, have you heard them somewhere? That is an internal issue. There are tango everywhere. Even within you and your wife, there can be a little skirmishes. But it, if it did not come out, that shows the leadership. Naturally, as we all meet here, we cannot go one way like that. There will be internal problem, but a good leader must be able to solve that internal problems. Do you get my point? That, that makes us attractive to the NDC. Did you hear the lady call and TB rain insult on President Kufu? Mind you, I'm Ashanti. And I was with President Kufu. I was an MPP. I've contested for Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer. I was the Young Elephant Movement one of the serious leaders during Kufu time. As at that time, who dare you to say something against any elderly person? During 99-2000, elderly person will call you in order, but now look at what we are witnessing. I can assure you that with me, Mama is going to get two million in Ashanti region, because Ashanti is my home. Ashanti is my stronghold, and we are going to work hard for him to get that. So that, that was actually a genuine boat saying who was also disqualified and now he says he belongs to the Mahama camp. We wish him luck. Now, Inspector General of Police John Kodalo has assured Ghanaians uh, domiciled in other West African countries the police have no plans to bar them from returning to exercise their franchise on December 7. Executives of the uh, opposition New Patriotic Party in the Volta region have expressed concerns about the influx of Togolese into Ghana on election day to vote and is threatening to stop all such aliens. At a media briefing after meeting with the Volta Region Election Tax Force in Ho, however, John Kudalo said his outfit will ensure Ghanaians duly registered but resident outside Ghana will be allowed in to exercise their franchise and that it will be unlawful for security officials manning the country's borders to attempt to prevent them from entering the country on election day. I don't think the police have any mandate to come and vote here. But you know the long standing historic history between the border and uh, Togo for that matter. Now, all that we are saying is that any Ghanaian is free to stay anywhere and work. So if you are living outside the African continent and you are duly registered and your weapons are ready, you can fly in, nobody can stop you at the airport for not coming. In the same wise, 
if to act out a living genuinely and lawfully, you find yourself in a country without our borders or without, I mean, I say without that is the distance. I don't think anybody can stop you. And the security agencies will ensure that everybody who's supposed to vote or who's supposed to have easy access to and from the country across the border should be allowed to vote. So this is the pulse.